And we are live. Welcome to Fun in the Country Basement. Uh, it's Sunday. It's that time. You know, you know how things go. So I am here with my buddies Glenn and Walter. Uh, it is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to everybody's mom. Uh, I am Chris Riley of Chris's Basement. Hopefully you know that. That's why you're at this channel. So we're going to spend the next couple hours trying not to break as much as possible, maybe get a few things done, and chat about 3D printing. Walter, I'll let you take it. Hey, I'm Walter from Country 3D, and uh, I ain't figured out what I'm going to work on yet, but thank you for joining us anyway. Uh, Chris is normally the uh, young one of the group. Glenn's the old one. I'm in the middle. I'm the middle son, so that's the way that works. That shows uh, how old you are. You can't even uh, you can't even remember how old you are. I'm going to pass it off to Pops now so he can tell you who he is. <laughs> Wait, well, you can just, you remember? You just did. <laughs> hey, everybody. I'm Glenn from Fun King 3D, and we are a father and son channel that does uh 3D printing and electronic projects, which today I'm going to be working on an electronic project. And if it all goes well, I'm going to play you a wonderful little ditty at the end. Not really. Yeah. I don't. I don't actually play the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> but now, if Chris will fire up a drum set, you know, <laughs> hey, maybe he can play loud enough they can't hear you messing That's up. That's right. Well, I'll just I'll just make the motions and not, you know. <laughs> nice. Right. All right. Let's try. Let's run through a little bit of chat here and see how, how we can do here. Uh, Martin 3P Iceland, I noticed he was in here really early. Good on you, Martin. Uh, Mark Wilson, Glenn from Fun King is here. Watch out for that guy. Andrew S is here. Mark Hart is here. Sergio is here. That's H V A A to Z. I always mess that up. Mapro 6 is here. Victor is here. Carl is here. Uh, Joe Paddock is here. Whatever maker that is. What a, no, that's Minnesota Maker. Never mind. I don't remember your first name, whatever Maker, but you're here. Thanks for thanks for joining. 3D Jimmy, uh, Techie Dad, Brandon is here. Hardman is here. Mike Wiley is here. Uh, Aaron Seeger is here. Stephen, I can't read that for some reason. Robert Reynolds, Inside the Mind of Matt is here. Welcome, Matt. Uh, a Fatal Paper Cut. I love that name. I don't know that I've ever seen that before, but welcome. <laughs> uh, Never Let the Machines Win, Mike. Um... Uh, Benjamin is here, Bryce Swordsweller, uh, Robert Hornrug, welcome Robert, he is a Patreon supporter of mine, uh, John D, we're going with that, Ron Owensby, 3D Homebrew, Net Keys, Andy Pearson, a ton of people here, welcome everybody to FKB. All right, uh, Glenn's working on a keyboard. Chris, what are you working on? So, um, the this is uh, so you can either call it a Wanhound Duplicator Six or a uh, Monoprice Ultimate, or I think there's a Zortrax, or there's one of this machine is like got five hundred different names. It has the the one of the worst filament paths in in the extruder hot end setup. It's really long and it has a lot of chance to get hung up. And I've had it hang up four or five times now. So today I decided to crack it open and uh, see what's actually going on in there, see if I can make it a little better. But in the process of that, uh, one of the screw heads was stripped. So I ended up cutting it out by just drilling it out. So uh, now I have to recover from all of those problems and uh, see if I can get it to print again. So we, yeah. Well, I am starting on taking the hot end off of this TiVo little monster. So that I can put a thermistor back on it and get this thing back into production because I need to print some things and I'm not able to do so right now because half of my printers aren't working like they should. Another and day with the TiVo. Oh, yeah. Have you guys ever <laughs> gone to start a project that you have to take apart and then you realize that there's like five million screws? Like taking a laptop apart. <laughs> Yeah, You're like <laughs> you don't know which ones to take out, <laughs> right? But you always find out later and realize you shouldn't have taken a lot of those out, right? Yeah, you undo one, and all of a sudden you hear like clunk, and it's like, oh, that probably wasn't good. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> now some of these are marked with an L, and some of them have a little arrow. So I'm I'm thinking based on where they are, the ones with the arrow is the ones that I want to take out. Always go with arrow first. Any, any Yamaha keyboard experts out there? <laughs> I'm going to try it, coming. John. Go ahead, Chris. Go ahead. No, I'm going to try it. John Digenstein? Digenstein? 
I might have got close. Degenstein? Yeah, th there you go. Take a look at it. But John, thank you very much for the one dollar tip. Always appreciate it. Uh, MP3D's here. What is up? Bob S is here. Uh, Aaron, wow. Seeger, Aaron Seeger, that is the meanest thing to say about Walter. He did not come out of a dumpster. I'm sure he has a mom. <laughs> uh, this no, keyboard, no. no. The, the story on this keyboard, it was actually given to me by, the, by my church. I had, uh, I had reached out on Facebook a while back because I wanted to learn how to play the keyboard, and I wanted to know if anybody had one they wanted to part with cheaply. And uh, the church had this one taking up space in the back room. And I later found out why, and that's because... Uh, when it's on and you would lift up, if you'd lift up one corner or if you'd push on it wrong, it would cut the power. And so then you'd have to wait for it to reset. So, and it's been sitting around now for about a year and Xander asked me about it. So I told him I would attempt to fix the problem. I am not, I don't know about y'all. Okay. There it is. I was wondering, I couldn't find the, uh, screw holding in the, uh, Mm, the thermistor. Hmm. I finally found it. They're, they're usually quite tiny and full of plastic. <laughs> yeah, well, we're going to find out if it's full of plastic or not, because I did find it. And that means that I have to go find an Allen wrench that fits it now, because I don't have one right here. Uh, I end up using a standard on mine, and I want to say it's the 16th. Well, I gotta look one, over here and see if I can find one. So the metric one never fits it. Well, I'll tell you, I know that what the problem is not with this keyboard. It's not missing any of the screws that hold the lid shut. <laughs> this is this is unbelievable. <laughs> JH, hello, how are you, Sergio? I think we I said, I said hi to Sergio. Hey, Sergio. Uh, Magnus is here. MMPP, how are you? You're so good with the names, Chris. Man, I, and I still miss half of them, but I I do make an attempt. Ooh. Techie Dad oh. said uh, Torx bit work better for those little grub screws. Yeah. Slug Prince, uh, I haven't dug. Welcome, by the way. I haven't dug into the printer bot yet. I just unboxed it. Uh, I still really need to sit down and see how those things were actually made. Um. I haven't really got even an idea of. So I remember the ones with the older ones, with the uh, the the smooth rods. But this one's got linear rails, so I'm gonna have to make some assumptions along the way to try to put that thing together. But I haven't actually got to back to looking at it yet. I've got so many other printers that that really need work, like this one. 3D Jimmy, I'm trying to avoid the uh, the power driver just for the noise. Stephen Corbin wants to know who's going to Earth. Everybody. <laughs> Everybody that's anybody. <laughs> I don't know if the FK1 is going yet, but I will be there. I don't know. Are y'all um are y'all doing anything for Memorial Day? Uh Chris, Glenn? Uh, uh, I am not. Probably not, no. Okay, because that, that was the weekend I'm gonna be in Disney, so. Hmm. Uh, Apparently, the holes marked L are for the longer screws. Uh-oh. That makes way too much sense. That's Yamaha for you. Yamaha, actually, they, they've, they've produced a lot of good instruments over the years. I know back like in the early 90s, anybody who was anybody had a Yamaha drum set. Well, I will tell you that their saxophones are some of the most expensive. Yeah, yeah. I believe that. We, we bought my daughter the, the cannonball saxophone. And uh, there were a couple of Yamahas that were more expensive than the cannonball. And that's that's odd to me because when I was growing up playing saxophone, saxophone cannonball was one of the most expensive. Uh, you know what? I think I'm going to have to heat this up to pull the thermos trap. Wait, now we all know that Walter plays the saxophone. And we want, we want video proof. <laughs> uh, no, I played saxophone in the middle school, man. 
Oh, so like 300 years ago. <laughs> yeah. You know, just after you did. Uh, so we have a we have an electronic store in Orlando uh, called Skycraft. It's a it's a it's a surplus store. But there's a distinct smell when you walk in there. And I just got that same smell when I pulled the cover on this. Like that same yeah. <laughs> antique electronic smell. That was uh like, that was pretty amazing. Like the old school Radio Shack smell. Yeah, I don't know. It's a it's a yeah, I guess. Yeah. It's a very distinct plastic and, and nylon smell. Ooh. Oh yeah. Uh, Absolutely smells like Skycraft. Wow, that is awesome. I love that store. I've been shopping there since since college. Brian Davidson, uh, first thing I would do is take a quick measurement on all of your idler gears just to see if there's any difference. Um, somebody, somebody showed me a picture the other day of their printed housing and the whole, so the, the idler runs across like this and it feeds into a blind hole. I think there's a bearing on the other side. I don't remember exactly, but it feeds into a blind hole from one side. Well, that hole on the other side was actually... I don't know if it was a little too big or if the print was shifted just a bit. So the, the shaft was actually tilted up a touch. So check that printed part. You might want to consider reprinting that body or have surgery or have Prusa send you one. Tristan is here. Hello. The I am amazed at how much more complicated this looks than what I was expecting. Like I just <laughs> expected it to be just really simple. And, uh, and it just doesn't seem to be that way. Scott Latine is here. Good day, printer geeks. For bonus point, who knows how to conjugate the verb to run? <laughs> what? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> uh, Scott, uh, Scott must be working on code and documentation today. Oh, come on. Just stay right long enough to heat up. That's all I need you to do. Take a heat <laughs> gun to it. Well, I just, I want it to heat up enough so I can pull that thermistor out. But the uh, the old thermistor is not allowing me to do so. Come on, you can do it. Registered just long enough. 155 should get it out, don't you think? I think so. Then I've really... got... Sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. No, you're good. I was really hoping that all the electronics were going to be in the bottom of this thing so that I could see the display while I was poking around. Oh, no. <laughs> of course not. Why would they make it so easy? <laughs> yeah, then everybody would do it. Right? Mark Hart, are there, are, do you guys know, are there any, like besides Bay Area Maker Faire, what, what, is there a 3D print convention on the West Coast? I <laughs> my, my, my wife sitting out here just said, oh, God, I hope not. <laughs> uh, no, Mr. is out. I, I, other than, like, just the, the meetups that Matter Hackers does. Oh, there you go. I forgot about that. Oh, it's hot, too. You would never guess, man, that when you heat up the heater block with the thermistor in it to 155 and you pull the thermistor out, that yeah. the thermistor would be hot. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen that happen a time or two. Yeah, that makes no sense to me. Come on. Let's put the new one in there. You know, this printer, when it's printing, actually prints really well. And I, well, not, I wouldn't say really well. It needs some part cooler. <laughs> but it prints fast. Uh, but, uh, the worst part about it, it has the most annoying set of fans on it in the whole world. 
they are really terribly loud. And now I'm trying to find it so that I can unplug it so I don't bother anyone. Because it's awful. Here it is. I think I've worked on six printers today already. I uh, spent uh, most of the afternoon yesterday and then some of the afternoon today sorting Lego bricks by color. <laughs> and uh, I, will, I will share that photo on Twitter later so that you guys can understand my children's collection of Lego. Because it, it, it is mammoth. And we're we're not even halfway there, and we've got what six hours into it. Wow! Yeah. All right, I have success. I have a new thermistor installed in the TiVo. Now I just get to put it all back together. Well, that that seemed like it went uh, without well, issue. That went yeah, way too well. <laughs> the whole hot end is completely apart. So now I get to put that back around here. Once the thermistor cools off to a touchable temperature. Ooh, it aired out because of temp sensor. Oh, I thought you meant because uh, Glenn farted or something. You're going to air it out. <laughs> no. Oh, no. You'd know if it was me, Walter. You'd be dead. <laughs> <laughs> so it has something unplugged. Oh, no. Because I have the hot and unplugged. That'd do it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't claim to be a smart man. Well, it seems whatever it was, it might have just been a loose connection because I pushed all the connections tight and it doesn't uh, doesn't seem to be doing it anymore. I love it when a plan like that comes together. <laughs> and the key Man, Chris, Yeah. Chris and I were talking right before the stream, Glenn, about that exact thing. Well, not that exact thing, but something similar because I I enjoy working on small engines like lawnmowers and go-karts and stuff of that nature. Absolutely. And a lot of times you can find them on the side of the road and there's absolutely nothing wrong with them other than the carburetor needing cleaning. And, and Almost new, always, yeah, the carburetor is gummed up or it has bad gas in it. A, a new a new pull rope or something you know nothing nothing major hardly ever and that's that's a lot of things man people throw away a lot of stuff because one little thing went wrong and they don't have any idea what it could be right and they don't want to they don't want to spend the money to fix it they would right. rather just go buy a new one and as soon as you call a shop they're like well it's going to be a minimum of two hundred dollars yeah and you're like well the 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 whole lawnmower was only two hundred fifty dollars so yeah screw that Yep, Aaron Seeger's got it right. Carb cleaned and new gas, ninety nine percent of the time. Yep. Well, do you do you uh, do you remember when everybody switched to? Well, it was like I don't know how long ago it was now, but when they were switching to ten percent ethanol, and it oh, was yeah. Uh, yeah, it was eating up all of the the fuel oh, line. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you well, can you leave line. that you leave that crap sitting in the tank for any length of time, and it gels up and causes all kinds of wonderful problems. Yeah. You could find a lot of good deals then. That's a fact. Let me tell you another time you can find a lot of great deals like on golf carts and stuff is after a hurricane when it floods the shore. I'll bet. Yeah, but I mean, you, you know, you use, take the use motors. cars too. <laughs> yeah, but you can, yeah, used cars normally take a lot more than a used electric golf cart. <laughs> yeah. Because you can, you can uh, give the motors, normally give them a vinegar bath and give them a, uh, good, you know, cleaning and they'll spin right up. But, you know, cars, they, they do a little more damage. And what's really sad about cars is, is normally right after the flood, you can get the water out of them and they'll crank right up. But then as they age, that salt starts corroding all the electrical connections in the dash and everything. So you just start having this myriad of problems that you have no idea what's going on. I think I hear filament clicking over here. I hate that sound. Nope, problem's still here. 
Wawa here has ethanol free gas. Pretty much every station in my county has ethanol free gas because we're so close to the bay and people like running it in their uh, outboards. Used to, you could only get it at the marinas. Now you get to put all that 400 screws back in there, Glenn. Yeah, no problem. Problem still existing. Oh, is it? Yeah. I don't know, Jesse Foreman. Mine is right here. As soon as I get this hot end put back together and I get some sort of filament on here and start printing something on this printer, I am going to open my UFO box. Um, I did get mine the day after he shipped them out. So, I mean, I did get mine again before everybody, which really doesn't make any sense to me because there's a couple of people in South Florida that get them that should get them about the same time as me. But where is Josh at again, just roughly? Uh, Ocala. Yeah, about, about 45 minutes north of me. Yeah, okay. so uh, pretty much central Florida center. I mean, if you were gonna if you were gonna call Central Florida, the first town that comes to mind to me is is Ocala. No, we're north north central. You're north central. Yeah the the first town that would be considered Central Florida would be like Claremont. What? Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh no. yes, sir. Absolutely. No, you live in North South Florida. North South Florida. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we live in very very north South Florida. Yes, very, very north south Florida. See, we, we up here in the panhandle, we consider anything past Perry central Florida. So, you know, that starts, yeah, that's that's about 50, 60 miles north of, of Ocala. And then as you go down, the, the bottom of central Florida would be Orlando. And then you're in South Florida. Uh, Osceola County. So St. Cloud, Kissimmee, Disney area is Central Florida. That's, and then, that's what y'all call it. Pretty much <laughs> south of there. All right. Power off. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. No, it's yeah, there you go, Matt. That It could be we. No, normally people from the panhandle. Not just me, so we, where I live. If you ask anybody where Central, around here, if they're from here, where Central Florida starts, they'll say as soon as you get out of Perry, the other side of Perry. Because it's where it turns down. It's where the panhandle no longer exists. You know what I mean? So. All right, now to try to get this back together. That's still pretty warm. This, this reminds me of a computer I worked on years ago where the computer was fine until you put the cover on the case <laughs> and then it yeah. wouldn't boot. Oh, I, interesting you say that. I just had that scenario, and I, I couldn't figure it out. But then I did figure it out. Um, yeah, well, for me, it was a guy who was bringing his computer to the shop, and he would – it was like this massive, massive old case. And so he'd take the cover off so it wasn't so heavy, and then he would get there, and it would boot fine. And he'd go home, and he'd put it back together, and then it wouldn't boot. And so finally, I, you know, like we had to, we had to determine what was changing – So the case was running it out or what? Yeah. So what was happening was when the case went on, it was causing the interior chassis to flex a little bit, and it was shorting the mainboard. Ah. Go ahead, Chris. No, mine was – um. so that last one I built, was it the last one? I think it was the last one I built. Uh, the Folger Tech. So I thought the LCD was bad because it was going all crazy. Uh, it, it was like it, – it wouldn't – the if you tried to print from the SD card, it'd freeze – they would throw up blocks and then it'd go into like Chinese for a minute. And it, I mean, it was just doing all kinds of weird stuff. Well, after switching out the screen and it worked, so I switched out to a screen I already had, it worked. Everything was fine. It was a bad screen, right? 
So then I put the screen back in, the screen that I knew that worked, and it started doing it again. And, and it was mounted on a piece of acrylic. And I'm like, what is going on here? So I loosened the bolts up a little bit, thought maybe, you know, maybe I smashed it. You know, maybe, you know, sometimes when you put your thumbs like on an LCD, it'll go crazy. Right, you know, like right. When you're, when you're disturbing it. Uh, and it helped a little bit, but it was still doing it. Well, come to find out, the acrylic that they used on that printer is foil lined. So it's actually metallic. Holy and cow. The pins on the front of the screen were grounding out. <laughs> and you installed it. So That's I just, crazy. I just clipped them all <laughs> and uh, put it back on, and it works fine. Wow. Huh. Yeah, I that that was a, that stumped me. I couldn't believe it. But there you go. Kyle Davis with two dollars said, "Hey Chris, I got the SKR one point three on their way." Kyle, thank you very much for the two dollars. That that is what I was going to do today was the SKR one point three, but I had too much other stuff in the way. So maybe I'll do that tomorrow. Uh, do I have a copy of ramming and MMU2 settings? I do, and I can send them to you. If you want to leave a comment on that video, on the MMU2 video, I will get them to you. This is, uh, this is quite baffling. New York always means Rochester and Buffalo to me. Yeah. Doing well, Brian Vines. Doing well. Uh, how are you today? Brian, uh, Brian's really stepping up the content. I don't know if you have a chance to watch a lot of Brian's videos, but... Uh, Who, who's Brian? Brian? Yeah. I never heard of that guy. <laughs> B, uh, Ryan with a B? Um, he so he had so he he did another video which I don't actually recall watching where he tried to test thermal runaway on the Ender three, and then he realized he made a retraction or not a retraction but he made a follow up video. And he realized that if you just unplug it, it goes into negative, so that triggers min temp, which is another thing. Uh, so if you but if you actually pull it out and it's just reading room temperature, that's when you trigger the runaway. So he went back and did that test and proved that there was no thermal runaway on it. I thought it was well done. Did, did a good job on it. All right. Man, these wires suck. Oh, I'm already tired of this. <laughs> Trade you. <laughs> and then I'll take this one. <laughs> Trade you. I don't understand. Come on. Get in there. How is that even possible? Where are you at? There you are. It there. Okay. That is just the craziest thing. You fix it? No. What do you mean, no? Force Cura to print an object of 230 millimeters. I. I'm not sure what you're after. If you you just need like a generic object to print, or it won't go over your build volume. Yeah, slug slug will help you there. He's got some advice. Glenn, yeah, I'm gonna test that uh, that board out. I'm kind of curious for twenty bucks. I don't know how far it's going to get, but we'll see. What board? Uh, that SKR 1.3 everybody's talking about. Uh, I got you. The new Mendel Casio tone looks cool. <laughs> uh, the Yamaha 3D printer. They, they probably make one. <laughs> 
if you go to the right country. Carl Brown is here. Hello, Carl. It is 32-bit, Carl Davis. It is a uh, LPC... What is that? 16-something-something-something? See how technical I am? Uh, LPC 1768. Anyway, something like that. It's funny the way this thing is put together is like, like all the wires are wrapped like perfectly and, you know, cable management is so awesome. And like, you just don't, you just don't see that anymore. Yeah, you're doing everything but 3D printers. <laughs> no, nothing nothing that's built with the same quality anymore. Back in my day. I'm going yeah, to put on the double specs here. Then that means there's nothing built like Glenn. <laughs> you would know. Uh, A couple of hot fixes on here. Hello, 3D. We're going to, I'm guessing that's 3D Granddad. Hello. I would think so. Afternoon, gentlemen, you two country. <laughs> <laughs> he's from, uh, he's from Florida here somewhere too. He told me where he's from, but of course I can't remember. Oh, uh, West of here. He's, he's from West of here in North Florida. I can remember too. He put the FWB down there. I remember where it's at. I believe that's him. Ain't that you, uh, 3DG Dad? Oh, um, um, Fort Walton uh, Beach. Yeah, I w he didn't want anybody to know. That's why he put FWB, man. <laughs> he, he put he put it in last time. Yeah, but FWB, not not he no, didn't. Put Fort last week he typed Fort Walton Beach, or I wasn't. No, he didn't was. either. Come on, man. Well, you think I'm a genius? Thank you. <laughs> You've been around long enough to know. You were there when they founded it. Well, I was there when you created it. I know. <laughs> Dang, giving me a lot of credit there, Glenn. <laughs> I made you as old as God's father. <laughs> That's right. Uh, Brian, this is the ultimate. Maker ultimate, I think you call it. It's a duplicator six. Uh, Tom Lama bought an official Raspberry Pi power supply, and the lightning bolt has gone away. We were chatting about that, what, what the condition was for that lightning bolt to show up. Uh, Jim, the Edge of Tech is here. Hello, Jim. Yeah, Sean Gould showed up too. He's been here for a bit. Has he? Yeah. Oh, he just said, hey, guys. Or oh, that's Michael Castle, my bad. For 20 bucks, it's a decent board. All right. Glenn, did you treat Miss Grisilla right today on Mother's Day? No. Okay. We went to Chili's yesterday instead because oh, it. it's hard enough to go out to eat around here, but on Mother's Day, it's like nearly impossible. Oh, I can imagine. In fact, our uh, Texas Roadhouse had uh, canopies and stuff set up in their parking lot so the people who were waiting weren't in the sun. Oh, wow. That's ridiculous. Which is very nice of them. It is. That is very nice of them. I took my mom yesterday to Texas Roadhouse and bought her a steak. Did you? I did. Damn. My mom is in Georgia. She was, she was, uh, I mean, she lives here in Florida, but she's up visiting my sister and uh, my niece is going to University of Florida starting next year. Go Gators. And uh, so they were down, they were down at the college and nobody told me. I'm like, really? Like, <laughs> I'm an hour away and you wouldn't tell me? That was on purpose. Probably. That was. It was. Happens to me all the time. Don't worry. They know I'd just ask them for money. <laughs> uh, well, you will never guess the backlash I got from buying that car yesterday. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Well, it wasn't even my wife, man. It was the uh, other daughters. The other kids, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
They're like, uh, we didn't get one of those. I was like, every one of y'all had something to drive. Just because she's the youngest and we have more money now? Because all of y'all are out of here? That's right. <laughs> is not my problem. Tell me how you line up three holes on a thing and the fourth hole just will not line up. Don't tighten the other three. I don't. I got them loose and I still can't get it in there. A wise man once told me anytime that you're building something out of China, don't ever tighten it until you got all the bolts in the holes. Never mind. I see the problem now. I see your problem right there. There's your problem. And it is a problem. I told y'all these. Y'all were all talking about, oh, yeah, so that was easier than you said it was going to be. No, it ain't. I ain't done yet. <laughs> That's why I said that was to curse you so that you have to work harder. Shut your mouth. Hey, better to line up now. I don't think it was a problem of lining up. It was that wire that was laying across the middle of the hole. That'll do it every time. So does anybody want to chip in and buy a roller coaster with me? Uh, yes. There's a uh, there's a roller coaster up for auction. It's in Daytona Beach, and uh, there was an incident on it <laughs> a year or so ago where the uh, the front car came off the track. Oh boy! And it left people like two people fell 35 feet to the ground. They're okay. Nobody nobody was killed. Wow! But. Uh, so this this coaster is up for auction, and it's uh it's starting at twenty thousand, and nobody's bid on it. Well, actually, somebody somebody did the buy it now on it, and then it went back up for auction. So they must have backed out of buying it. But uh, yeah, so it's it's sitting there for sale at twenty thousand, and so I was really curious, like, like you know why they're selling it for scrap? By the way, the oh. uh, the functionality of it has not been tested. Oh. Uh, it doesn't come with any cars, and so it's being sold for scrap. And I thought, I wonder if there's like some kind of rule that once a, a roller coaster is involved in an accident like that, that maybe they can't use it or that they can't sell it as a roller coaster or whatever. So I did some digging on it, and this thing was made in like 1970, and it's been it's been in like nine different amusement parks around the country. See, we need that it's like haunted roller coaster, man. We could totally do like the Scooby Doo thing. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, this could be the greatest thing ever. Hey, we could take it to Murph and set it up and use yeah. 3D printed cars. <laughs> Everybody has to print their own using Everybody uh, has to print their own car and sign a waiver. Using uh using uh filament spools as the wheels. Yeah. There you go. The new spool <laughs> racer. I mean it, it's just it it's building itself as we speak. <laughs> as we speak, the whole thing is coming together. <sighs> Gotta get that thing. Yeah, no, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> well, Walter's out. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> but you know, like I never, I never really thought about an amusement park selling a roller coaster to another amusement park, and then them, you know, coming and disassembling it and moving it across the country. And this thing, I mean, like it started, started where I can't remember, but, but like it's been in Delaware and Arizona and Michigan and you know, Florida and like, it's just been in all these different places all over the country. Like they don't just move it down the road. They really move it. No kidding. Uh, well, I mean, I guess, you know, you repaint it or whatever and you slap some new badges on it and then the park has a new ride, you know? Right. Yeah. Well, it's like, you know, I don't know if y'all remember or not. I remember when the Gravitron came out and I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. It's the one you go in and it closes the doors and then as they spin it around, your seat kind of slides up the wall. Yeah, yeah. You remember yeah. when it came out? I think that was invented in 1902. You know what? The, you're probably right. But Florida yeah. World's Fair. And now they call it, it's been through like four or five different names, but it's the same damn machine. Right. Yeah. They put some new lights on it and call it, it's like the, uh, what was the Dragon Boat when it first came out. And now they've called it like 55 million different things now. Yeah. We have a Kansas City has a fair size uh, amusement park. It's called Worlds of Fun, and they have one of everything. Like, but just like that, it's always the same thing. You know, the dragon boat ride, the the one that looks like the hammer, the one that oh, shoots yeah. you straight up in the air. You know, 
Well, and that's <clears throat> my wife was, you know, I was telling her the story about the roller coaster. And she said, that's why, like, I'm always terrified of the rides at carnivals. And I started laughing. I said, I worked at a carnival for like six months one time and uh, traveled with them around the state. I, I, I won't ride on carnival rides. I, I know the type of people who built it. No offense to anybody out there that's a carny. Maybe you're a good guy, but whew, the guys I worked yeah. with were, uh, were pretty scary. And, uh, <laughs> and like you look at the pins that hold the whole thing together, and it's like, wow, that's all that's between me and death. Hey, we, we, we went to our, our, the North Florida Fair. Uh, last year, no, it was a couple, three years ago. Anyway, they have an old roller coaster there, right? And uh, they've got it like leveled off with wooden blocks. <laughs> well, as as you walk around it, you see like four or five or six pillars that aren't even touching their wooden blocks. Right. They're just kind of suspended in the air, and you're like, yeah, you did a great job, didn't you? <laughs> Somebody called you for beer while you were in the middle of leveling. Mm -hmm. 11, hey, you thing. got an average of them touching. You're all right. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> I was talking with a contractor one time, and that, no offense to contractors, but uh, he, I was I was building a fence, and he was trying to give me advice on how I should do it. And there was a bunch of rocks and stuff. You know, I was digging with an auger, and there was a bunch of rocks and tree roots and things like that. And he's like, and he said, "Well, you don't have to get them all solid, you know. Just you know, every other, you know, couple three, if they're deep enough in a hole, that's fine." I'm like, okay, sounds good. Thanks. <laughs> just because uh, just, just cause the engineer told you to put 20 in doesn't mean you actually have to put all 20 in. <laughs> yeah, you don't need them all. Oh. All right, now it's 3D printing related because I'm using a failed 3D print to, to support it. <laughs> well, I'm, I uh, also sometime, hopefully, either tomorrow... Sometime between now and Wednesday, I will be taking possession of a brand new zero turn lawnmower. Sweet. Oh, that's exciting! Oh yeah. What uh, what what brand did we go with? Troy built. Nice. I I went because I could afford it. Right. right. <laughs> I uh, I don't know if I've told you guys the story. I had this like really really awesome lawnmower at one point it was called a raven and it was a uh, it was a gas electric hybrid the the deck ran on on electric well in fact it drove on electric but it had a like a gas generator in it so you could you could drive around on the batteries but if you were going to mow then you had to run the you had to run the gas engine but it was really cool and then uh, it got possessed and drove itself and crashed itself into my garage wall, and I took it in to get it serviced, and they recalled them, and I never got it back. No, oh. but it was the, oh, it was that, the coolest that, mower. Yeah, you told you told me about that mower, or told us about it. I don't remember. Yeah, because I, I modified it so that it would mow at like sixteen miles an hour. <laughs> uh. Well, I watched I watched a whole lot of reviews and stuff like that, and. uh on the mower that I wanted, because it's built in Georgia, I know where the factory is. Um, I, I, that's the one I wanted to get, but it, it just wasn't in the carts. It was too much money, and and I hear you. Just one of these days. But after after the Disney trip, and then having to put a down payment on a car yesterday, I'm I am flat out right now. So. What, Ron, hey. what, what did I break? Uh, what didn't I break? You didn't break the filler dry. It came that way. <laughs> I didn't know if we were going to bring that up or not. <laughs> well, you know, for those of you that have the secret video from this morning, go watch it. Especially if you're thinking about buying a filler dry. Go watch it now. <laughs> Matter of fact, go watch it and come back. <laughs> Tell us what you think. We'll, we'll wait for you. We'll, we'll wait. We'll, I, we'll I can tell you. I can tell you though, making that video was pretty painful. It, it That's a more, perfect imagination to form. Got the perfect name right there. You don't have to say it out loud. <laughs> uh, it, it was it was difficult to make, but because of a couple of reasons. One, that really hurt putting four brand new spool of filament in a bucket of water. 
Yeah. That's just, it, that did not feel right at all. Um, but, you know, I was waiting a week to make it. So, so I, you know, I let it soak for a week. I finished it up Friday, actually, this, fr this last Friday. Uh, but so this whole week I'm thinking, I wonder if it's actually going to do anything. What am I going to do if it doesn't do anything? What, you know, what, you know, it, it was kind of, it, it, I haven't made a video like that really ever. Well, uh, and, and slug prints got it right. Fill a dry, perfect solution. If your filament's too thick, <laughs> it will thin it out for you. <laughs> Fill a dry. You're right. Well, the, the Guinness, we, we knew that when we left Murph, we just wanted to do a, or to do a video on it, to show people that, Hey, the damn thing won't work. I, I think the worst part about it is it's one of those things like you really hope that it works. Yeah. It, you know, like you have high hopes because the, I mean, mainly for, for, you know, we in a very wet environment where the humidity is always like 90% or more, um, you know, you want something like that to be able to, to dry the filament and, and push on, but well, and, and here's the thing, too. I mean, you know, we make jokes that it didn't work, but the makers of this device showed up at Murph with, with something tangible, and they were selling something. So I don't think they legitimately are trying to steal your money. I mean, I, there's something there, whether we see it or not in testing, there is something there that they have created that they have decided, you know, this does something for your filament. I don't think they're just, you know, you know, put down your money and I'm going to run off. This isn't three card money here. Uh, but no, they're selling you something. Yeah. But they used to sell that in the wild west. Well, yeah, but, I, but I would hope, I would hope that that's not the case. Maybe I'm just missing something, but I guess we'll find out. Yeah. I just, I, I can't, you know, after we talked to Matt and Gordon at, at Murph, dude, when he talked yeah. about the, the chemistry of how filaments absorb water and how it works. There's no solution like that. That could work. Yeah. You couldn't create something that would take the water out that fast while it's moving through it like that. I mean, it would do exactly what that's doing and that's melt the filament and then it's no good anyway. So, yeah, I, uh, and, and you're right though, that talking with Matt uh, and I talked with, with him a little bit, uh, over Twitter as well after the fact, but uh, he brought up some really good points and it kind of opened my eyes on the whole thing. You know, just, just how he talked about, you know, the different makeups and what it would act, what would actually right. take to do that. Uh, well, see, yeah. I never, I never understood how PLA absorbed water until I talked to him. Right. You know, I, I mean, I knew that, you know, humidity would get to it or whatever, but you know, soaking it in water for 15 minutes really doesn't hurt PLA. You know, if it's if it's in a rainstorm and you bring it home and you dry it off, I mean, you're you're good to go. Yeah. You know, it just so that test that they had set up on the fill dry at Murph was a great magic trick or a great brain teaser or whatever you want to call it. But it just it just. It, it was what it was. It was smoke. Yeah. Uh, so then the, then the next the next logical test would be to take a roll of filament and throw it in a bucket of water, wrap a towel around it as it comes out and print with it and see what happens without the, without the fill dry. Well, he did. He, he did that with the sponge though. Yeah. On okay. his video. Uh, I told you I didn't watch the whole thing. Oh. Thanks for calling me out. <laughs> oh, well, you know, but no, he uh, did. He, he used the sponge with a clip, which was basically what you said, you know, and it's, it's the same. Yeah, uh, and I had I was on so PETG. So they asked me if I was drying. So I've already dried all that filament out. Uh, and the PETG was highly impacted, as I knew it would be from the water soaking. Uh, but I did dry both spools out for 24 hours. I'm currently printing with them both at the same time, different printers, and they're working flawlessly. So it did return to its usual form, maybe a little bit worse for wear, but it still prints. Hey, um. Imagination the form said Han Solo dies in your video. <laughs> Han so. Solo dies. Spoilers. Uh, I need a torch. I'll be right back. All right. I am too high. 
Which FK is Glenn working on? <laughs> uh, if that's a legitimate question, I'm working on the FK Yamaha. <laughs> the uh, Yamaha keyboard, musical keyboard that uh, has got a intermittent power problem. I think I'm out of gas. Dang. Uh, what did I use to dry it? Actually, I received a Matter Hackers Philodry for a gift. And that's what I use. They're kind of pricey for just a food dehydrator, but I received it for free. Which makes it less pricey. Right. A lot less pricey. So I don't know that I'd buy one myself. I'd probably get the uh, just a regular food dehydrator, but that's what I use. Yeah. The, the upside to the one from, from Matter Hackers is you don't have to go hacking up the the trays yeah it's already ready to go and it right. does come with some spools and some bearings you know you can read it some some spools you can wind filament up on and stuff so there's a few extra things but it's kind of pricey i agree oh i should uh i don't know if every, everybody's probably not here but i'm going to say that uh to everybody who has well i say everybody the majority of you who have emailed me about the prizes that you won on our birthday giveaway. Uh, <laughs> that happened. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> I'm, uh, I got to find the file. Uh, I'm missing a couple of people. Um, I don't think I've seen Poppy Ron in here. I need Poppy Ron's email address. Kit, I need your email address. Brian Bailey, I need your email address. And then uh, Dels Logos 3D Printing, I need your that's, shipping address. That's Derek Matthews. Derek Matthews. Yes. Simo, Chris, you need a hammer? Oh, I got one. Thanks. Oh, okay. No, Simo asked. I was just wondering. Oh, yeah. No, thank you. Oh, and the whole house come falling down. Okay, so this is an interesting one. I don't know where it's getting stuck, though. Hmm. It broke the filament off in there somewhere, but I'm not sure what part of the body actually broke it. Well, the TiVo is printing, so I guess I am going to open up. Did you do a Did you do a video on this yet, Chris? What's that? That the the May box? Yeah, the Alien box. Uh, I did I did in the January box, but I've only done one. Okay. Well, I am going to open up the. As y'all can see, the the theming on this one was really good. Got May the 4th be with you. Got a couple of drawings. I believe Josh said they were by him on his tablet. And, you know, they look like a kindergartner drew them, so that's good. <laughs> 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 I'm just messing with him. I couldn't have drawn them near that good. So The first thing I thought of is like, oh, no, what about Lucas? <laughs> you know, like, he's going to get sued. Lucas doesn't care anymore. Well, I guess that's right. It's Disney now, isn't it? It's just even worse. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Oh. Got some stuff in here. Got some Prusim at PETG. The Carmen Red Prusim at PETG. We have some Tallman Transparent Blue. This is tea glaze. Oh, tea glaze. That's what I just gave away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Courtesy of Joe from Project Red. We <laughs> have some Matter Hackers Build Series PLA, the silver. And Brian, some Brian. Ziltec PLA bronze. It... Brian is going to get shanked by a mouse. Go <laughs> ahead. There's, there's a. It's really, really cool because in here there's two night lights. There's an egg with a droid on it. So, you know, 
Oh, sweet. Mine had Yoda on it. Did it? Yeah. We have a... Uh, yeah, this is mine's got a stormtrooper, I believe. Yeah, it is. Nice. Uh, we have a USB cable, micro USB cable. It says you tried the rest. Now try the rest, and that's uh, from Filament One. Of course, we got the the trifold pamphlet here. Okay. Ah, I see. Said the blind man. Now I know what we're making. I don't know. Did yours come with this little thing in it too? Yeah. It's pretty cool, actually. I, I'm actually just gonna open this up. This is a it looks to be, if I'm not mistaken, it's a light box. It is. That's friggin' cool. Yeah, I thought that was a really cool idea. I, I don't know how to unfold it, but you know what? Once I figure it out, it'd probably make a box. I, I actually had to go look at the at the Amazon ad. <laughs> to make sure I was doing it right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because this seems like something you could tear pretty quickly. There it comes. Okay. All right. Oh, wow. It's got an LED in here. Sweetness. All right. So let's see how what we got here. We got this. Snaps onto there. This snaps onto there. This. Ah, wait, how's that going to go? Oh, it's a punch out. Never mind. My bad. You have to unsnap. And that will go there, and that will go there. No RTFM in here, man. Mm -mm. And they give you a black, what is this, black backdrop and another white backdrop, I guess? Yeah. It just kind of hangs on those two punch outs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Pretty nifty. Got a little LED light right here, light strip right here. That, uh, Sticks up. Looks like mine fell off. I don't know if yours did or not. Yeah, I, I didn't get that far. You didn't get this far? No. <laughs> oh, well, I'm going to try to see if I can find a USB plug somewhere I can plug this thing into. And there see right. how... I, I got one right here. You can have... It looks really bright. Really, really bright. Well, I used to have an extension laying here on my desk, and I don't have that extension laying here anymore. So I've got to try. What do I got? I got a wireless adapter, blah, blah, blah. Now let's just use, I think that's my microphone. Well, we can undo a camera because I'm not using it right now anyway. Let's plug that in. Let's bring this around. So you're supposed to use this to take pictures of your prints and stuff, I take it. Yeah, so or, that the photos look like, you know, on Amazon where there's nothing in the background. Right. All you see is the item. Well, come on now. I can't get the USB plug in there. Make sure I'm plugging it the right way. And, of course, I wasn't. Well, there you go. It's a white box. You unplug it and... It's pretty freaking bright. See you later, Jim. Have a good one. Later, Jim. He's dead, Jim. Tell Miss Tell Miss Lindsay I said hello. Uh, well, now that I've gotten every tool that I own out on the bench. Well, just so y'all know, if if you didn't know what I just unboxed. It's the Alien 3D UFO box. It's a monthly subscription box. And you always get some cool looking little thing. I don't know why. What's the night lights for? They're LED night lights too. Yeah, they're so you can make your own lightsaber. Oh. 
It's like a lightsaber night light thing. Okay, because you know what's really cool is you could plug these in like in your hallway because they're uh, they come on when it gets dark. Nice. So you don't have to turn them on and off. Okay. Isn't technology great? I know, right? All right, I'm going to hit my keyboard. I know this is going to shock you, but I lost a grub screw. No, uh -uh. I totally did. Can't believe it. Well, that, that really does suck because I just got mine all back together and it's printing and I didn't lose a damn thing. Well, it's amazing. It's because you're a professional. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, oh, no, man, I'm an expert. I'm an old drip. <laughs> Yeah. Insert the word spoiler alert before video starts. Why would I do that? <laughs> spoiler alert. Come on. Chris Riley dropped a screw. Drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, which Wait. reminds me, uh, not to, uh, to put anything down about the Alien 3D box, but I just happen to have a maker box right here. And I haven't eaten the candy out of it yet, so. Well, that's pretty cool because I just got my candy out of the uh, UFO box, and guess what? It's it's better than gummies. Good. I got okay, this lovely bag them. of Haribo's here out of a maker box that has yet to be eaten by my children. I've still got a brand new box over there, and I'm pretty sure there'll be a box in this Prusa box I have in here that I haven't opened yet. Oh. Um. I wrote the book on organization. You bet I did. It's, uh -huh. real, it's real short. Take every every screw you find, throw them in a bucket. Oh, I was going to say, take every screw you find, throw them on the floor. Well, well that comes later. <laughs> Walter wouldn't like the candy in this month's profile box. If it's gummy anything kit, then probably not. What box? Profi? I don't know that one, I guess. That's the... Um... Who? I Now I forget. It just left me. That's normal at your age. Yeah. It happens. Is it filament one? They'll tell us. Maybe. We got to get Glenn some sugar-free candy. Actually, uh, Scott McClellan has uh, has sent me a, a bit from uh, from Amazon, and it's been wonderful. But for those of you who don't know, you have to be very careful eating sugar-free candy because the uh, the sweetener acts like a laxative, <laughs> a very very good one at that. <laughs> That, yeah, she, I wonder if those are um, those those girls' screws are probably steel, aren't they? Well, I don't know because it seems like the hardware that comes with 3D printers are non-ferrous. Yeah, most of it's stainless. Yeah, like the I don't know about the the high carbon or what I don't remember what they call the those, but but well, yeah, I suppose because they have to put up with the heat that it would be different. Yeah. I probably have one of those grub screws. Can you? I guess I need like a set. You know, like they just sell a <laughs> set of grub screws, right? Yeah. Uh, um, Paul Cumber had an issue one time where where I can't remember if he lost the grub grub screw or stripped it out or whatever. So uh -huh. I I sent him a bulk from uh, Amazon. I sent him like four hundred or something. <laughs> That's what I need <laughs> for like seven bucks. <coughs> Yeah, I worked at the Grub Screw Factory. When that yeah, it, uh, John Schran said it was filament one. Okay, yeah. was the prize. <laughs> I have uh, uh, two, two kilograms of filament in that box every month. Yeah, you do get a lot of filament with the Alien box, that's for sure. You can try out a lot of different types. Grub screws. 
you're talking about living or, or working in a, a grub screw factory. I used to work right across the street from a trampoline spring factory. <laughs> that's a true story. Yes, that's a true story. And that's all they made was just trampoline that springs. All they made was trampoline springs for the trampolines you buy at Walmart. Wow. Nice. And it was amazing how many springs they turned out in a day. This, uh, yeah, Harbor Freight has a uh, grub screw kit, Chris. But the problem with Harbor Freight stuff, like their screw kits and stuff like that, most of them are standard. Yeah. Most of it is complete and utter crap. Not Harbor Freight as a whole. There's a lot of things at Harbor Freight that is really decent, but their drill bits, um, like the Phillips bits and the regular drill bits and stuff all suck. Their hardware kits are not great. All right. Just stole a grub screw off of a filament or extruder gear. And we are good to go. Now I'm going to need to use that extruder gear and go, what happened to the set screw for this gear? Well, maybe Xander's just going to have to learn to play this with the lid up. <laughs> I mean, no matter how much I flex it, it's fine. But I wonder if it's, if it's, there's like some, some steel reinforcement plates in the bottom of this and i wonder if it's making contact with those but i just can't i can't see where hey glenn hoax said that uh protopost is coming out with a box yeah everybody's coming out with a box now hey i got a mystery box chris send me a whole bunch of benches don't tell nobody all right <laughs> <laughs> start a monthly mystery box you'll never know what's going to be in it wait 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 no i i can one up that i'm going to start a mystery box and it'll be a mystery whether it shows up or not there you go, there you go. for 49.95 you'll <laughs> wonder if your box is coming <laughs> and you send out one box a month <laughs> yeah the mystery is who gets it yeah a ran random drawing kind of like the mothership in the alien box just a random drawing of who gets the box that month Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> All righty. I'm going with that. Uh, what else did I take off of this thing? Anybody watching? <laughs> Carl said, just like the two year prizes. Oh, that's sad, Carl. Yours was going to ship out tomorrow, but. I guess now it's going to have to wait. <laughs> um, Derek Matthews just said, he said, oh, yeah, he's still waiting too. But you got to have his address, right? Uh, who is that? Derek Matthews, Death Logos? Yeah. Yes. I'm still waiting on a, on a shipping address from him. I did not get an email from him with a shipping address. Uh, I need Kit's email address. So for those of you who need to send me, send it to Glenn, G-L-E-N-N, -N, at funking3d.com. Uh, Poppy Ron Kit, Brian Bailey, I need email addresses from, and then uh, shipping from Derek Matthews. Parker Brown's working on a country bow, sort of. Parker Brown, hello. Uh, does anybody know a... A uh, community member by the name of Jerry Key. Uh, I haven't seen that name. Can't yep. say I do. Um, he he won the well. Actually, Stephen the Lightspeed won the guitar amplifier kit, and he said he already bought one, so I could give it to somebody else. Well, Jerry Key was the winner, and I can't get a hold of him. So I'm looking for somebody that knows how to get a hold of him. Well, it's like, it's like Juan Adams. I haven't heard from him since he won the Starship, and he was supposed to be at Murph to pick it up. And I, I still haven't seen him in any any of our chats or your chat or any, anything else. No, I'll have to look because I may have him on Twitter. I can't remember now, but I may have him on my Twitter. Yeah, because I tried, I tried to find him on Twitter too and couldn't, so... 
Well, I might have him in, in DM because we talked quite a bit after Murph last year. Because, I mean, his, his, his I'm going to say gimmick, his gimmick is, uh, is, is teaching kids, you know, getting kids involved in 3D printing and, and stuff, and he's using it for education. He's got, I, I don't know if you've spent any time talking to him, but he's got some very creative ways of teaching math and stuff. It's pretty awesome. Colin Hill had a good idea. It's critical to gasify the product. Everybody gets a box. Only one of them has anything in it. <laughs> that way that way they all feel good or they get those, that endorphin rush when they're opening the box. Uh, Carl Schumann, yes, I have. If I didn't call you out in class, I have your address. That means I got an email from you. But I should have everything boxed up and ready to go. Back of my room. Well, does anyone in this chat or anyone know anyone besides Dave Randolph uh, that has an Ultimaker with an enclosure on it? Hey, Glenn, uh, David Matthews said that he got you a message on Twitter as you told him about putting a sticker in oh, the box. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. I remember now. I remember because I, you know, I told everybody to email me, and then there's always that one guy, right, that doesn't listen to the to the instructions. But no, I remember now. Okay, slug prints. You're absolutely right. I did too. I thought it was going in a different direction. Patrick Niedenhoff said, "Ain't nobody got money for an Ultimaker, Chris." That's why I said besides Dave Randolph, because he's the only guy I know that makes enclosures for Ultimaker, custom ones. I'm, I just I want to know the dimensions of the of the enclosure because I think it will fit this thing because it's pretty much a straight rip off of an Ultimaker. Couldn't you just ask Dave Randolph what the dimensions are of the? Well, Dave is a really busy man. No, and, he's uh, not. What, he doesn't have anything to do. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, we talked about make, you know him making a custom one, and I don't you know he's been relatively busy, so I don't want to push him. But it, but I thought if I could confirm that without having Dave run around and measure stuff, then I'd just go ahead and buy it. He's not, he's not too busy. He's just too good for us. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron Seeger, I am going to do one more video, at least on the ANET um, A10, I think it is, the Delta. I'm going to do my final thoughts on it, and that's pretty much the end of that. Uh, Paul Cumber, I'm working on a Yamaha musical keyboard that's got a weird intermittent power problem. Make one out of foam board? Yeah, I could do that. Um, the other day, this printer was broken, but we were, well, it might have been last Sunday we were talking about it. But somebody said, What's the cheapest way to build an enclosure? And Walter jumped up with saran wrap. Yeah. <laughs> I. I was this close after that stream to running up and getting the saran wrap and just wrapping this thing continuously, just as much as I could get on there and putting it on Twitter. I, I can't uh, imagine. I, I mean, like, I don't think you'd really have to wrap it all that much, and it would it would work. I, I think I it would, but it would have been hilarious if I would have used like a whole roll. <laughs> yeah, you got to get pallet wrap. Yeah, yeah. Go, to, go to Harbor Freight and get you one of those pallet wrap rolls with the handle on it, so you can just sit there and go around and around. We pilot wrapped a guy's car once when I was a kid. <laughs> oh, Llama said they're, we're, they're, we're all too good for us. We just, we, they just like slumming it every now and again. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, Parker Brown said he's seen saran wrap done. It works just three or four layers. Yeah, it's just got to be enough to hold the heat in and keep yeah. the keep the breeze off of it. The grow tent from Amazon, 50 bucks. Well, see, and that would absolutely work pretty much on my on the TiVo that I've got right here. I could wrap this thing in saran wrap and, and print like hell with it. Mm -hmm. But I know I know some printers, you know, they have mechanics and the way they get filament in and all that other stuff, it would be an issue. I think this thing's done print with it 
I don't want to turn it on. The fans are too loud. <laughs> it's unplug really annoying. The, un unplug the fans. Yeah, I, I plug. I just plugged it back in after I was working on it. You can listen to it. Like that? That's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like there's something stuck in that fan. That's like three of them, all in unison. Uh, a fatal paper cut. That is the Anet A10 Delta. That is one that they gave me to test out, and uh, I have tested it out, and I am I am in the process of doing the review for it. So it, it does make pretty good prints. I I cannot tell a lie. And so far, hasn't started any fires. Well, it does have thermal runaway protection. We did test that. Now, it's not the greatest because it doesn't tell you, hey, I ran away. It just kind of stops heating that one hot end or the bed. It just stops heating. doesn't stop, well, printing or anything. It just stops heating. Well, that's fun. Jesse Foreman, it is the, it's the ultimate maker, I think is what they call it. Maker ultimate, whatever. That's my nickname, the ultimate maker. Ultimate maker. I was going to call myself Ultimaker, but it had been taken. We do, Mark Greco. We do know it's Mother's Day, and that's why I'm here in the doghouse. <laughs> we I'm celebrated just, Mother's Day yesterday to beat the crowds. I'm just going to stay here in the doghouse after we get done streaming so that... <laughs> no, actually, actually, my wife is, is not feeling real well today, so she's just kind of laying on the couch not doing anything. Glenn, the faker maker. That's right. Though I do have to admit, lately, I have had absolutely no motivation. That's why I haven't made any videos. I just haven't had any motivation to do anything. Nobody motivates me anymore. <laughs> Mine's coming back, but I have to buy a bigger air conditioner. Well, my problem is, is every time I come up with an idea and I go to shoot the video, Chris is releasing the video about it. It's like he steals my scripts. I know. <laughs> and my products. I mean, God dang. I could have swore I bought a filler drive to make a video with. <laughs> I snatched that right out from underneath you, too. You didn't even know. Got tons of views on it. <laughs> I promise you, he's probably got more views in the first hour than I would have had in uh, a month of Sundays. I can't believe how many people were interested. I and watching that well again uh, we all had the hope that it was going to work i mean I think that's ex you're exactly right i mean honestly a rep box and then one of those hanging off of every roll of filament coming out of your rep box how perfect would that be yeah but not at all because it doesn't work yeah sorry we're giving away we're, we're spoiling the video Pretty sure everybody, everybody, pretty sure everybody in Chris's stream has already watched this video. Probably, probably. Uh, what did he say? Uh, does that mean <laughs> Chris is just a Prusa in disguise? <laughs> yeah, it's because you steal everybody's ideas. <laughs> yeah, imagination to form. Take it apart, please. I asked him the same thing, buddy. <laughs> like, how could you not have disassembled that? Well, you know, it belongs to Walter. I thought about it. I, I really, by the, by the end of that, by the time I was done with it, I thought I had done enough. You should have been totally yeah. like, and this is the, oops, whoa, what did I do? <laughs> uh, Cause it's going to turn out, it's just like a, a little heater element, not even like, not like a hot end, just, just a heater element as the filament goes by. And then the two fans. Yeah, just a copper coal with electricity going into each end, so it heats up. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Desi Foreman said he likes the dual heads that move up and down on the Ultimaker. He would like to see a cheap way to make that happen on another printer. 
Yeah, that's uh, if if I'm thinking of the the same one that he is, that's a kind of a uh, intricate setup that they use. There, there's another one that does that. That's way too expensive for me to afford. I don't remember what it's called now. Uh, ben Hawk 3D Proto would know what I was talking about. Um, I can't remember, but it has two heads that do that. That they push each other out of the way, or it lifts them out of the way, or something. It's pretty cool. I'm sad now. All my candy's gone from the box today. Me too. That was that was the only thing I got up for. <laughs> he said big rep printers use dual extruders that lift up and down. John Justin Emerson did. Nice. Patrick, you're gonna have to wait and see. That might be a follow up video that Chris Riley does. <laughs> Chris is always looking for good content. That's right. Even if he has to steal it from me and Glenn. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Got to get it one way or another. James from Print and Play used to be my biggest threat. Now he's off doing retro gaming. Yeah, I haven't checked any of that out yet. I guess I really need to. But if I was a good friend, I would have already. I don't know well, if he's I, released any content yet. I was just to say, I subscribed and rang the bell. I hadn't gotten any notifications he's done anything oh, yet. Well, then I'm all caught up. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm a lot better friend than I initially thought. <laughs> <laughs> Current lead time on the uh, Philodry is a month. That, that's how far behind they are on orders. Wonder how many of those get canceled now that Chris Riley has his video out. Yeah, you know, that, that actually kind of... Uh, Makes me feel bad that that's going to happen, but it's going to happen. I, it, the thing is, I, I, you know, it's one of those things where you go, okay, I, I need my money back. This is doing nothing but stretching my filament. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't only stretch your filament. It also makes it hot. Well, you know. It preheats it. That is true. Scratch my table, man. You, man. Now that's hard to do because that's click lock flooring too, isn't it? Yeah. That stuff's tough. That's what I've got on mine. No kidding. Let me make sure it's not glue, but now it's scratched. Dang it. That's why we can't have nice things. Oh. What's up, one bad marine? What is up? There you go. It's a magical box which turns PLA into flex. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe I have cured its problem. What was it? I don't know. I I just took it all apart and put it back together. Oh. Uh, HVAC A to Z. My wife could wear that maybe because that may be a little big on her. But no, that that would you could send it to me, but I could not wear it, my friend. Oh, but I would I would pay at least five dollars to see you try it. Yeah, for me to put on a medium shirt, yeah. I bet. <laughs> that guy in a little coat. <laughs> right. You're Aaron right. Seeger wants me to play you guys a tone. I could dang sure funnel my, my inner Chris Farley with that one. <laughs> All right, you guys ready to hear this? This is a masterpiece that I wrote. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hold your hold I didn't hear anything, so great. Fantastic. All right, I'll play it one more time. I heard that. That's it. That's yeah. it. You know what? I think you were in key the whole time. <laughs> that's that's the, that's my masterpiece. I call it the elevator door is opening. Oh, I call right. it E. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's gag. Yeah, Glenn, oh, your right. lock repairs work fine until you hit three notes. Then it electrocutes you. Now play the Mr. Rogers theme. I don't know the Mr. Rogers theme. <laughs> That's the beginning of it. It's just a <laughs> piano suite. Yeah. <laughs> I would totally play that if I knew how. Copyright strike in three, two, 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 one. <laughs> one. <laughs> uh, <coughs> I'm pretty stoked. It's a... Uh, it's solid. I used to not be able to pick it up in this corner without it blanking out. 
So it was probably just a loose connection on the main board. Ain't that always the case? I cannot believe I did both of the things that I wanted to do today on this stream. I actually got two things done. So maybe I should not stream anymore during the week and only stream on Sundays. I'll get more work done. Well, the point of these streams was to get stupid little projects done that you didn't want to film otherwise. Right. Well, that's true. That's true. Oh, here, I'll play you the beginning of Jingle Bells. <laughs> that's it. That's what you get. For you who doubt, that is it, it begins with E. <laughs> If you're oh. done, then continue on the Stargate. <laughs> yeah, here comes Patrick talking about the Stargate. <laughs> uh, that's so funny. How to get shit out of the way. Yes, Tech wants to know, Chris, if you can show how you have all of your printers set up. He'd have to take you on a tour of the entire house. The two yeah. he has in the bathroom are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that and that 40,000 square foot storage shed that he owns where yeah. all of them are set up <laughs> but he's running out of room he's going to do a retro computing stream later nice uh can you show how all the printers is up um no i can't easily but maybe we should do that one sunday i'll uh set up like android cam or something as my as one of my things and i can walk around no, i See, like the fact that scott said pitch pitch <laughs> a real pitch if you post a link to the stream. <laughs> Benny Brady, I ain't even started on it good yet. I've got it printed. Everything's printed for it. I just hadn't put it together. You know what's funny? If y'all go back to Chris's beginning, right? In the beginning of Chris's basement, I think what he did was he took a picture of it and then he went and recreated it in this big warehouse <laughs> so that he has all of his stuff spread out and he just shoots in this one little area. Yeah. Yeah, I that think so. I, that's, your, that's your studio. That's what you did. Yeah, I, that, yeah that sounds about right. <laughs> uh, Scott Latine, I made him a moderator. So he was, you were talking about links. So now Scott could post one if he'd like. Right. No idea on the link. Yet. Oh, you, you didn't pre-schedule it. Kind of pre-sched. He does, he does uh, moderate uh, Marlin as a whole. So he could probably handle my streams yeah i think he's i think he's safe to you yeah. know that he's not going to go off the rails <laughs> <laughs> learn to fly a tiny whoop drone and fly through the house there you go one bad marine said i outed you now you're, you're just gonna be mad because i outed you uh so so a lot of people ask about this 1.3 board, the SKR or whatever it is, SKR. So what, Glenn and Walter, what what do you want to see? Like if if so, I'm gonna install this board on this printer and go, hey, look, it works. <laughs> what what? I mean, I'll show you how to configure the firmware, of course, and and all that good stuff. But I mean, what what is there to know? I mean, it's 32 bit. I'm not gonna max it out. Uh, I mean, yeah. I, I really don't know what you want to see. But you could you could build you a good CNC machine. Yeah, yeah you could. But it, you're still not going to max it out, though. No. Five axis laser engraver. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, you know, we were talking, or Glenn was talking about earlier that it's it's Fun King 3D and electronic. They do electronic projects. I don't think the 3D part of of your name pigeonholes you into doing just 3D printing because yeah. just because it's country 3D, hell, I'm in 3D. Yeah, but get, get, Chris, get, Chris's, Chris's doesn't even have 3D in it. That's what I mean. But you get some glasses and put it on. That's why I'm so pixelated all the time. It's the 3D <laughs> effect I'm throwing in. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my phone just rebooted itself. That can't there you be go. Great. Tony Ryan's got it. Should we be able to play have MIDI it, music? There yeah, have it have it playing like Metallica while you're while it's printing. <laughs> well, yeah, they, I mean they are they they are capable 
of doing things like that, you know, 32 bit, any 32 bit board, right? But I wouldn't even have anything to print that fast. Show, uh, build a Delta for that board. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll whip that right up. Um, difference in printing circles. Yeah, we could do that. Um, circles will stall a, stall a printer out pretty fast. We should we should stream in 3D and send out 3D glasses to everybody. <laughs> yeah, but it can't be like the new cool kind. It has to be the red and blue kind. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> everybody can print their own. So I want to I want to show you guys this picture of. Uh, oh no, that's not it. Forgot that's I changed, I changed monitor. Yeah. All right, there you go. That is uh, that is the kids' uh, Lego part of their Lego collection. That's like a third of what they have. Wow, that's six hours of sorting, and I know that it's going to come back to bite me because uh, Zach won't keep it. No, he won't keep it organized. Last time question, have you heard of anybody modifying the Ender 3 Z axis to print higher than default 250 millimeters? No, but I can't see that it would be very difficult. Yeah. No, you might have to extend the wiring harness, but otherwise it would just be taller Leech. uprights and uh, lead screws. Right. Yeah, lead screws. Well, now the firmware might give you an issue. Well, you would have to change. You'd have to change the settings in there. Yeah, you'd have to tell it that it could go past. Um, Check check with um, with the Happy Extruder because he did it with a uh, CR10. He made it a thousand millimeters tall. Yeah, one bad ring said he's seen mods at four hundred. There you go. The only problem is because it's got a moving bed, you're going to end up with a lot of ringing the higher you get. Yeah, it's, yeah, two fifty is. You know, I had the one that was four hundred millimeters, and it's it's a lot. Uh, it really is. Dave Randolph's here. Hello, Dave. See, I told you he doesn't have anything to do and he's not busy. <laughs> <laughs> he finally decided to show up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. Why is Knack 3D watching this stream and not working on his printer? I can make a Da Vinci print 400 millimeters, but it's possible. 3, 3D G Dad's thinking going 500, 800 millimeters. Yeah, oh, it's going to be sketchy at 800 millimeters. Tony Ooh. Ryan said you could do a, a, a hang printer. Yeah. Yeah, even, even 500 millimeter, I think, is going to be pushing it as far as uh, technically Z wobble. Chris, how are you liking the i3 Mega S? Yeah, uh, I haven't done anything to it. Uh, and if I, <laughs> it's going to sound kind of weird, but if I need a sixth or seventh printer, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I start printing on it. So it, it is one of my go-to machines. I, you hit the button and it starts printing <laughs> and it's fine. Technically, all of your printers are a go-to machine if you go far <laughs> up down the line. <laughs> well, <laughs> dude, you're one that I will. Ahead, There's some that I won't even attempt to print on anymore. <laughs> but that, that log printer you got right there in front of you prints b better than a lot of kits that are for sale. Oh, yeah. Good old log. Everyone needs a six or seventh printer. Yeah. So it's I, not, I, just, I, not just a six or seventh printer. It's his six or seventh go-to printer. Right. <laughs> when he runs out of the five go-to printers, he hits that six or seven. It's... Okay, let, let's let's actually see which number it would be. Uh, it, it'd be number five, actually. It'd be number five. <laughs> okay, because you you have two Mark Threes. Yeah, you have you have a Mark. You have at least one Mark Two that I know of. I got two Mark Twos. So that's that's four. Yep. And then number five would be the I three. Yep. Okay. And then after that would be what your Ender or Log. Uh, no, the, well, log probably. If if I uh, like the Lowe's Malt Mini, is pretty. We start getting into size constraints after that. So like, 
then it would be something like CR10 still works pretty well. Um, Lulz, the Lulzbot Mini works pretty well. It's really, really loud. Uh, the Pulse, after I converted it, works awesome. Yeah. Um, so things like that. I got you. So, so you have a multitude of go-to printers. I do. It's just whether or not you need to be running that many go-tos at one time. Right. I got five running right now. And that's pretty common on a usual day. Um, I saw a quote. What does log stand for? Log is a spin off of Rin and Stimpy. It's log. Uh, it's log. <laughs> right. It's big. It's heavy. It's wood. <laughs> Steepy, you idiot. <laughs> I watched it. Uh, there's Ed, a show Ed, Ed, Ed. about that cartoon, not, not, but like maybe a week or so ago. Yeah, that came on. I was probably, I don't know, 10 or 11 when that came on. Like, yeah, it's this cartoon that was just totally not appropriate for you. Yeah. <laughs> Log won't work in Florida. You got termites. termites. <laughs> the humidity, the humidity will affect the plywood. Yeah. yeah. Warp the frame. Linear organic gantry. Uh, no, for <laughs> who was asking about the i3 Mega S? That for for the money for a Cartesian i3 style machine, it has been great. So uh, it could use a little. Bit more part cooling, but that's about it. You won't be disappointed. And I tell you what, I love, I love how quiet this thing is now, with, with the with the duet on. It is so quiet. That duet's impressive. I mean, just sitting here, I can't, I can't hear it running. What, what, what was that? What was that, Chris? What did, what, what did you say? Duet's <laughs> impressive. Because <laughs> you were a doubting Thomas, and you were all like, "I don't think I like this thing." <laughs> that see, and there, there's of course there's a million stories to go with with everything, but uh, uh, the only thing that that really irritates me about Duet is the screen and Marlin compa compatibility. Um, I wish that they would do something to make it more compatible with different screens because the other 32-bit boards are. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. And, and I, I don't know. I thought I read that there's a couple that it's compatible with, but for the most part, it's got to be theirs. Right. Um, but they don't they don't own rep rep firmware though, do they? No. No, but it's that's definitely just, been catered for them. Yeah, that's well, that's I mean, the they firmware do most, that they chose and they do most of the development on it. I mean I get that, but it's completely open source as well, right? Yeah. 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 Has uh has anybody heard any updates as far as because you know I know that um I know that, that duet was working on I'm going to say the equivalent of CAN bus, but for 3D printers, where instead of having to have a bunch of wires run, it would actually run almost like networked. So you'd have to have a power, you'd have to have a power, a ground, and two signal wires running to your hot end. And then you'd be able to like tell it to turn on, turn on the, the heat, the heat cartridge, read the thermistor, run the fans all through just four wires. If I, I thought remember. you had that working, why are you taking it back apart again? Uh, Cause I missed a screw and I'm anally retentive enough where I'm not okay with that. Oh, uh, that's uh, what made Mike, it better. Mike asked me how the ANET resin printer is doing. It's do I, I didn't get an ANET resin printer. I did. It, and I don't believe he's used it yet. I haven't, I haven't even ordered resin for it. Right. And uh, Scott said that once he gets Marlin running on that board, it'll be better. 
That's right. I agree. Well, get to it, Scott. What are you doing? What are you going to tell us you're busy like like Dave Randolph is? <laughs> <laughs> he also said he talked to David Crocker when he was in Sweden, who is currently working on the rep rep firmware. Oh, nice. Uh, somebody said something, something. Oh, Colin Hill out of the five prints. Only one of them is a Benchy, and it's a 400% Benchy. 400%. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, have, I have one on this card set at 450 that's ready to print on, on the little monster. I should rig up some way to run one of these big spools and do it. The the one that I printed on, on the FK1, the one I had at Murph, that's a 400% Benchy. Hey, that's question. 450. Chris, do you think I could run the filament Using the uh, the MMU spool holders and put like two of them side by side and set that big spool on it. You think the uh, you think the extruder will pull it through it? The the giant spool? Yeah, I don't know. You know, I've talked to shenanigans about that a couple of times. You know, what's the best way to turn one of those big guys? Yeah. Um, it might give it a try, but I think you're almost going to have to pull it on its side, like spin it on a bearing or something. That's a lot of weight. It, James, of weight. James designed a, a spool holder for that. Did he? Yeah, he ran a bunch of those for the um, Ready Player One. Sweet, Michael Fox. I need to get started on mine for sure. John from You Dude is here. Hello, John. I watched him play video games the other night for a little while. It was kind of entertaining. <laughs> huh. Jesse Foreman said, Scott Latine, I got a pic with, picture with you at Murph, but Walter photo bombed it. <laughs> I think I was in the background. I think he posted it on Twitter and I was in the background. I don't, you know, I don't know. I think I got a picture with Scott. I don't remember now. I don't I don't think that I even had the opportunity to see him. Yeah, I talked to him for a little bit. D Dustin Jetman said to me at Murphy, he goes, man, he goes, I came over to see you twice and you like totally cold shoulder blew me off both times. And I'm like, what? He <laughs> goes, yeah, two times I came to talk to you and you didn't even pay any attention to me. I'm like, dude, I didn't see you over there. <laughs> Uh, th there's a lot of people that I didn't talk to. All the people that you would know, like as as a as somebody that watches YouTube, like a regular YouTube watcher, those are the people I didn't get to talk to. Right. I got to talk to Tom for like 30 seconds, and that he was the probably the biggest 3D printing name that I actually talked to. I didn't get to talk to Tom until in the lobby of the hotel on I think I think it was Sunday night. Walter improves any photo. Yeah, I know. I've got like 15 of them where he's taking pictures of himself on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's because he doesn't understand technology at his no, age. You can, you can pretty much bet. If you give me your phone to take a picture, first thing I'm going to do is spin the camera, take a few pictures of me, and then take the picture you want me to take. It, it is true. It's very I true. Do that, I do that when I go to Disney or any theme park or anything. If I go, hey, you want me to take your picture? It's like a couple or something. I'll take two or three of me first. And go, oh, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand this technology stuff. <laughs> yeah, Carl Brown. Yeah, I didn't get to talk to Carl very very long either. He had I he had people standing in line to talk to him. There was people behind me trying to edge me out to get an interview with him. We uh we stepped outside because me and Regina were vaping, and uh, we stepped out there, and Joe Prusa and Joe Kasha and Tom were all standing out there, just talking right there. And I I stepped out. Joe was smoking. Uh, Prusa and mm -hmm. I stepped out there to and was talking with them out there. We stood out there a good 10 minutes talking, I think. I don't even remember what the conversation was about. It wasn't about 3D printing, it was about something else entirely. Mike said he was in fan mode most of Murph. <laughs> it's usually the way it works. I always like, I always get home and go, Man, there was so much stuff I didn't get to see because I was more worried about seeing the people. It's like yeah. a big family reunion to me. 
And now Earth will be here before we know it. That's not funny, E and H. <laughs> well, I missed it. I would never do that. But I will take pictures of myself on your phone. If you give it to me to take pictures of you, you will have a picture of me. I was thinking about, was it, in vacation, European vacation, National Lampoon's European vacation, where the guy's like, oh, I take your picture, and they're like, yeah, and then he runs off with the camera. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, man, come on. David, I don't know, man. It's 16 hours. How far is it from from printed solid to earth? Oh. I might have hey, to make that happen, David. That's 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 because that's going past, man, and it's already 16 well, hour drive. Don't don't tell Uncle Ron, but I'm thinking about hitting him up because I think I'm gonna fly into New York and have him chauffeur the family down to Earth. Nice. 30 miles. 30 miles. That's not bad, I guess. No. Hey, drive 100 miles an hour and be there in almost 15 minutes. There's a couple here. Uh, so there's nothing actually wrong with this printer. It's just got its guts spilled out. And from the last video I did, I need to put it back in. I'm going to swap out to this board. So there's nothing actually wrong with it. Let me ask you this, Chris. Are you going to, are you going to leave the touch screen on that? Nah. No. Uh, now, it gets disassembled too, way too much to, to leave anything nice on it. I got you. <laughs> That's why we can't have nice things. This thing just gets well, trashed on a weekly I basis. Just, I like the touch screen going through serial, man, so you can run it on 8-bit print, 8 bit board. That's awesome. That sure made things a lot easier. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I definitely have to go to the, the, the printed solid open house, maybe both times, before and after. Uh Spaceball, what 3D Jimmy Fusion 360? Do I use a space ball? Is that the is that a track like a thumb track ball? Is he talking about? I think about? that's that. I think that's the like the knob. It's a it's a, uh, a knob with buttons around it. Oh uh, no, I just it's a regular old mouse. <laughs> Carl, no. If I ship the FK one, it's going to go right to the venue and right out of the venue home. I still have to get quotes on what it's going to cost to ship that thing though. I have not tried the Zesty Nimble. Uh, I did talk to Brian from Zesty. I just love the name of that. I love saying yeah. Zesty Nimble. Makes me want to have saltine crackers. Um, Zesty, but, Zesty Nimble, Zesty Quick. <laughs> but no, I, ha I don't have one yet. Saltine crackers. Think of oysters. Oysters, mmm. Walter, the question is pictures that you take of yourself, Fuzzy? Uh, yes, they all are. I told you I'll take them in 3D, man. Come on. Put your glasses on. <laughs> Do you guys, so I, I meant to poke Glenn about this earlier, but the, the toilet paper holder that Joel did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, the, there was a couple of funny moments in that, but when he goes, well, let's take the temperature of this heat gun. <laughs> and he says, oh, 400 Fahrenheit. And he turns, he's like, what is that, 20C? <laughs> Uh, David, I appreciate that, but um, uh, Chris P said that I could ship that thing right to the venue. Yeah, no, and then it was like every issue that that Joel had with that toilet paper holder, I'd already, I'd already come across. So I really yeah. do have to upload that thing because mine, wherever he is, he I scaled him, I scaled him larger. And I don't remember, Joel used PVC pipe for this. I don't remember if I designed this or if he just missed this piece. I can't remember. But, um, but no, mine is, mine is, the belly is gutted out a little bit. And then I scaled him to make it wider because I use huge rolls of toilet paper. I'm a big pooper. So, you know, I got to, I see my kids. They are the super dukers in the house. When I was researching toilets, I found the toilets that I have are the second best rated for, for flushing fecal matter. I'll say this for good YouTube talk. They will flush 1,100 grams. 
Oh my lord. And my kids have clogged it twice. Oh. Hey, Glenn, Dave Randolph asks, are there no venue shipping charges? I don't think so. If there are, then I will be shipping it to, uh, <laughs> to printed solid. <laughs> yeah. E and H asks, who researches that? I research everything I buy. When I built this house, when I built this house, I spent the days building. And then at nighttime, I spent all my time online researching whatever the next, the next phase was. So like during the framing phase, I was reading the entire electrical code book, which is this massive riveting read. And actually I read that thing three times, but, um, yeah, I would always research like the products and stuff that I was going to use for whatever the next phase was. Uh, this house is way overbuilt, but that's my nature. And uh, well, I'll be. I fixed the screw, and now now it's it's completely busted. <laughs> Now it won't turn on at all. <laughs> it didn't. I had to I had to like tweak it to get it to turn on. This is crazy. LVG. Uh, we did not open the fill of dry. I'm gonna let Walter handle that. The people are demanding you to open the fill of dry, Chris. I know. <laughs> Yeah, you had to mess with it again over one screw. I know. Well, I'm so anally retentive. It would have bo bothered me. Like, I pride myself when I work on engines and stuff that I don't have parts left over unless they're the broken part. But if you if you have parts left over, it means you were a better engineer than the engineers that designed it. Yeah. Because it's working with less parts. Idler barrel that even the like the 3D printed barrel that's in the the little door is that what you're talking about? Those used to be steel pins. I don't know when they switched to printed, but I've got I think I have one that has a steel pin and then one that has a uh, a printed pin. Uh, is that on the Prusa we're talking about? Yeah, yeah. Mine was uh, mine was a plastic printed piece, but I never ran into a problem with it. Yeah, that screw is the problem all along. <laughs> yeah, there you go, E and H. That's that's always funny. <laughs> Walk past somebody working on something, throw an extra screw or two down on their table, or just take one. I used to love oh, yeah. to do that to my sister when she was building uh, puzzles as a kid. I'd always take one piece, and then you'd hear her get real mad because the puzzle was done. She's like, I can't find the last piece, and I'd run in and put it in because I'm an a-hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, the inner bar the barrel in the MMU, too, with the bearing that's lined up with filament. Okay, gotcha. Oh, I haven't put my MMU together yet. Well, you're missing out on a ton of fun. I, I can tell. That's why I haven't been real excited to put it together. Yeah. Spaceball 5000. I like it just because of the name. I'm in. Where do you find used ones, though? On eBay? I wouldn't mind having one. There you go. There's, there's a link to Scott's stream for this evening. Heck, yeah. Retro Perfect. Live. Once you go space ball, you'll never go back. <laughs> uh, I, Glenn uses the uh, little tracker ball mouse, and I, I can't stand those either. I'm yeah. not a fan of those either. Well, yeah, and, then, and then Logitech has a, a software that lets you reprogram the buttons, you know, because there's like the forward and back browse button. And then I have the, the, the newer, I think they call it the Ergo. This one I use on my daily PC, and uh, they were $100. I guess now they're down to about 80 but 
Um, this one has a, it's got a button here that turns it into real fine resolution. Like, so like you move the ball and it just barely moves the cursor. And then um, you've got these two buttons and then you've got, you can set it to be on two different computers. So I have those set for different programs. Those, I change the programming on those buttons depending on what program I'm in. So like for, uh, for Rhino, when I'm designing in Rhino, one is a, uh, one is a mirror and the other one is, I can't remember now. I can't remember what I have the other button set to, but it's just whatever I use the most frequently. And I've actually been thinking about buying a stream deck just for that purpose, just for setting it up for Rhino shortcuts. Scott, Eight bits should be enough for anybody. Anybody. I, yeah, I keep trying to tell people that, but nobody wants to listen. Water has risen enough. He has to watch where he sits. Going to evacuate the makerspace. Have a great night, everybody. <laughs> Have a good night, Carl. Sounds like it's starting off really well. Wow. See you, Carl. Yeah, Ben, I've been using a trackball for a long time, and it started. It started because the company that I worked at, if you if you got up and walked away from your workstation, somebody else would come and like start using your computer, and it was annoying. So I started using the split key ergonomic keyboard and a trackball because everybody hated them, and then nobody would uh, nobody would would take your machine. <laughs> Yeah, that company was, uh, they were harsh on the workstations. You'd go out on a service call and you'd come back and your hard drive was gone out of your machine because they sold it. Wow. <laughs> it's like, well, what about my stuff? Well, you know, we had to format the drive. David, that's, uh, I hate to hear that, but they are pretty finicky. They're, they're not perfect by any means. All right, I think I'm going to kill this Benchy because it's doing fine. The whole thing's printing. And don't I don't need it. What? Don't kill it. You know you need another Benchy sitting I around. I do not need another Chris Riley. I was I was helping Zach clean his room yesterday, and, and in the pile of, of trash that I dug out of corners and stuff, I'm like, do you really need this Benchy? Yeah. Why? It's 3D printed, and I'm like, it's not like I couldn't give you 100 more of them. Right, it was the Chris Riley Benji, and I know that because it had the filament written on the bottom. <laughs> that's, you know, that's Chris Riley is why they're shutting down Toys for Tots in Kansas City. <laughs> Kids got tired of getting benches. <laughs> I just filled the bin completely. They're falling on the ground. Full of benches. <laughs> Drive in with a with a, a dump truck full of benches. <laughs> uh, uh, Benny Brady. From what I understand, it's it's you know it's. Half a dozen one way and six the other. Yeah, I I, ha I struggle with the palette too, just as much as I do with the MMU two, if not more. So they're they both have problems. 3D Jimmy said, if you got money to burn, get the Spaceball Enterprise four hundred plus. Whoa, I'm not paying four hundred dollars for a mouse unless it my work depends on it. Hey, Scalda. Have a good night, buddy. Sleep well. Yeah, this board's got to have a broken trace on it somewhere. Well, I thought that's what you were going to do this stream was find that. Yeah, well, it's got a huge aluminum heat sink over it. I can't really see the board. Oh. So, plus, I have to go, I have to tell, I have to pull it out and go take it under my, my super eyeballs. That would be the big desk magnifying glass. My close vision is is complete and utter trash. The blind spot is uh, is fading quite nicely with the injections that they've been giving me, but my close vision still isn't great. Yeah, Slug Prince said he thinks your plan was to disassemble and reassemble several times. <laughs> that is that was my plan. Yeah. I just wanted to make it look like I was busy. There's actually nothing wrong with this keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> well, we heard it play, so we have to believe you. <laughs> I 
if you haven't done it three times, you haven't done it. Don't tell me I have to tear this hot end off of this TiVo again. I really don't want to. <laughs> well, you've probably already done that three times. Though. I have done that three times. <laughs> uh, well, that is time, gentlemen. I'm, I'm pretty hungry. I'm pretty ready for dinner. I'm having leftover ribs. Mmm, ribs. I'm having steak if all went well. Excellent. <laughs> and you can only get steak if the piano starts to work. What's that? I said you only get steak if the piano is working. Well, it, it does work intermittently. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do the custom? It, it's a it's John Cook. It's a Mark. It's a Prusa Mark II. Go to Tom 3DP. Go to his website. He's got a, a list of all the parts. I also have a list somewhere of all the stuff that I use that I can get you as well. But anyway, uh, Walter, I'll go ahead and let you say your outro. Look at here. I got to go first twice in this day. Uh, I'm Walter, Country 3D. Y'all come check it out. I'll be back online Tuesday evening. I will start streaming again, 6 to 8 Eastern Standard Time or Daylight Saving Time, whatever we're on right now. I think I'm hoping they're doing away with that. Um, and we'll do whatever in the heck comes to the stream. I mean, it doesn't really matter. We'll work on something or we'll just sit here and talk. It doesn't matter. I um, want to appreciate everybody that was here. Thank Chris and Glenn for hanging out with me. They 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 honor me with letting me be on here. So. That's because your wife pays us. Uh, she does. She does. <laughs> she still ties a steak around my neck for the dog to play with me. So. <laughs> she wants two hours of alone time on Sunday. <laughs> I will tell you the best thing she did for me, though, was every water glass that we have, she puts a little black thing around it so that it can't see me coming. So I don't have to sneak up on the water anymore. Oh, I see. <laughs> Sorry, that went over my head. Hey, there was no hair to stop it. Oh. Well, that's where we're going now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's that time of day. Uh, <laughs> well, Glenn, that's you. Everybody, I'm Glenn, and this is Fun King 3D, and uh, I also want to thank everybody for hanging out. Again, I've said it a million times, and I'll say it a million more. These streams would be senseless without you, and we appreciate you guys being here. Uh, a big thanks to my my recent increase in subscribers. I jumped up like, I don't know, like 13 or something. We hit uh, 4,700. I think we lost two over the last couple days, but that's all right. And uh, yeah, I guess that's all I got for today. Oh, don't forget to check out fun, funcountrybasement.com for where the stream's located every week. There you go. And uh, everything those two said, uh, plus I'm Chris Riley. Thank you for coming to the channel. Chris's Basement, you know, the Twitter, Chris Riley 3D, that kind of good stuff. Uh, it's always fun to hang out with these two on Sunday. Just chat with you folks. I actually fixed some stuff today. I'm pretty, pretty happy about that. Now I'll go and see if I can break it again. Which I will, and uh, break, don't break. Yep, yeah, don't break, don't break. That's exactly right. But thank you again for coming. You know, we love you guys. Uh, we wouldn't, uh, we wouldn't do this without you. So uh, please come back. Well, I'm sure we'll see you again next week. Anything else, gentlemen? Oh or no! If you're not, if you're not subscribed to any of us, go go do that. Yes, please. Thank you, Walter. The, yeah, immediately, if not sooner. Yeah, the <laughs> link, the yes, link to these two are in the description of this stream. So definitely go check them out. You good? Yeah, I'm good. All right. Well, we'll see everybody next week. Bye.